November 25th, 1949. That's the day I was born. I was born at 210 Shaw Road, Royton. I went to St Anne's C of E secondary school. And if you're any good at maths, it, you're sort of a chancellor because the, the headmaster was also the maths teacher and he took a shine to me for some reason. Mr Nittle, Pop Nittle. I left, I left junior school with no qualifications because there were no chance to get any qualifications at any modern school then. No levels, no GCSE, anything then. But I went to Oldham Tech uh, for many years after that and finished up with a, a reasonable qualification, HNC in mechanical engineering. And then I went to be a designer. I worked at uh, Osram GC for 30 years designing um, lamp making machines and anything that were allied to that industry. And then uh, I went to MCM Conveyors as Chief Draftsman from there. And then from there, uh, I, I went to work for myself for 20 years. I, I found a company called Lease Consultant Engineering Services Limited. And that lasted 22 years until I retired in 2010. Which is quite a while ago now, isn't it? Just after we got married, we went to uh, a place called Mevagissi in Cornwall, no, it's the coast of Cornwall, I think it's south, no, it's south coast of Cornwall. Beautiful place. A couple of coves round about them, like National Trust beaches, a really nice place. And we got, we, went, we, we went sort of, we didn't have anywhere planned to go in, I guess, and we, we knocked on this door, and there was a vacancy sign up, bed and breakfast, so we got in and beautiful house, it was a nice breakfast. And, we were a pub across the world called the Arbor Lights, remember that? And from this car park of this pub, you could see all the, all the bay. And I took photographs of you on holiday. So come back, come home, and we had them developed. And this one, it turned out really well. And all the, all the houses are different, sort of colour of pastel shades. So I thought I could put out a different painting that. And I had some old watercolour paints. So I painted it, and although it was today's standards, it wasn't very good, but people ain't thought it was good. So I, I painted some more. People thought they were better. And I was, I was painting quite a lot of stuff then. But I, looking back at it now, it wasn't very good, but I, don't, I was quite satisfied with it at the time. And uh, I remember going, we used to, every Friday night, I used to go in the, the Puckersley pub. And a friend of mine, Ken Ashton, said, come on, bring one of you, bring, bring one paint, paint it, let's have a look at it. So I took one in and when I came out, he commissioned me to paint a picture of his house, <laughs> which had his bungalow on Shore Road, actually. So I'm a few, a couple of miles up from, well, a mile from the Puckers Liverpool. And he seemed satisfied with it and that led to another one. And I finished up exhibiting in the Puckers every Christmas. I used to do all right there. Best saleswoman with uh, Ella. What was she called? Fred and Myra. Myra. She'd bully people into buying them. They were right, too. They were 50 and 60 quid a piece. It was quite a lot of money then. In the late 70s. Uh, and then um, it snowballed from there, really. This painting um, in oil is one that doesn't follow the normal pattern. I started painting it, I got a little bit fed up with it. I put it down for a month, or two months, and picked it up again. It just sort of gelled together then. It's, uh, that's Greenfield there. This is, a, this is like True Valley. A lot of my painting is True Valley. And this is a, a campsite off Wellyhall uh, between um, 
trees when and green fuel. It's um, this is a, a, a factory that's in use, and I can't remember what it's called. But there's a big pond in front of that. You can't see it on this painting. The signature on this is, is uh, written Robert Lee's 2022. It's one of my latest ones there. In fact, it's the latest, I think. And I used to just sign RL and then a number. And that was the, the year I was painting. Well, I've decided to start painting, writing my name. <laughs> because it, it gets lost sometimes when I paint in a silical signature. Now, it's a bit of a legacy, isn't it? A bit, a bit pretentious to put your own signature on. But anyway, that's what I'm, that's what I'm going <coughs> to do in future. Well, I do landscapes because it would remind me of well, the beauty of, uh, of nature and also remind me of where I live because I invariably do the landscapes of uh, my locality, mainly in the valleys and the hills of Saddleworth and the, the, the lakes and the um, reservoirs and canals, rivers. So really, although sometimes I do put figures in my paintings, it's to give them sort of a narrative and also to bring some kind of a, a scale to the thing. But generally speaking, I'll, I'll do landscapes and I really enjoy landscapes. I know local landscapes and as, as good as anywhere in the country. You've got the, the moors and the, you know, the sort of more lush places uh, in the valleys. You know, where you get the broad leaf trees, and they're really, it's really impressive to be honest. And then we've got the villages. The villages, of course, have been there for many years, uh, hundreds and hundreds of years. And I don't think a lot of them have actually changed within this village it's, uh, themselves. I certainly the feel of the place, um, especially the places like Dob Cross, you know, in the square and Delph on the main street, it, they're really nice places. River Tame um, comes into play as well. We hear a, a, meandering, a meandering little uh, river in place. It, it does eventually, the rain, <laughs> if it's raining out, come into a bit of a torrent. It's, it's, it, it's disguised in many places because it goes under the, under the ground and reappears when you don't expect it to. But yeah, it's, um, it's it's a lovely place we live in, and people don't realise that. They, all they think about uh, when we say places like Oldham and Saddleworth and Wright and Shaw and Gallatin, and the historical old cotton mills. Well, some of them are still there, not many, but, but there's uh, many parks. I mean, Alexander Park is fantastic in Oldham um, as a result of the cotton famine. When people um, couldn't work in the cotton mills because there were no cotton coming into the country for the American Civil War. And uh, people were given work to do and it created Alexander Park. And named after, you know, Princess Alexander. So that's a good thing. And then you've got places like Chatterton Hall Park. There used to be a hall there. Like a, not exactly a stately home, but a, a big um, family mansion. And his, the, the land that was surrounding that became Chatterton Hall. Quite an interesting place, Chatterton Hall Park. There used to be a big lake there once. It's not, in fact, there was, there was a golf course around there. Chatterton Golf Course, a nine-hole golf course. Not many people know that. And then, of course, we've got golf courses. We've got four, five golf courses in all I won't list them all, but we have. And uh, there's plenty of room for wildlife and uh, nice Really nice views, to be honest. I mean, I've played golf for many years. I played at Cropton and Wright, and I played at Oldham, especially Oldham. It's the captain at Oldham Golf Club, actually. But then, and then of course, you've got places like Tannen Hill Park, which is another uh, private estate at one time. There's some the beech trees in there. I don't know all of them, but some of them are quite old. 
fact, they're getting that all now. They're sort of one or two are dying off, I've noticed. But, um, yeah, there are plenty of places I used to go fishing as well. Like, you know, there's uh, Ogden Reservoir, I'm rather keen on that, and Hollingworth Lake. Um, canals. Chal uh, the uh, canal in Chalerton, the Rochdale Canal. It's beautiful in places. It's a nice place we live in, and people don't realise that. And I'm, I'm, one of the reasons for this exhibition is to, to remind people of that fact and to make them appreciate it more. Anyway, this, this particular painting is, um, I had a, a few days in, in the, uh, the Trough of Bowling, um, just treating myself to a few days away in a hotel, it was great, I enjoyed it. And uh, I took my camera and my painting stuff, and this is a direct result of that little holiday. It's the Forest of Bowling, this, and, um, the, the name forest suggests that you'd expect a lot of trees, uh, and there is a lot of trees on here, but it doesn't really actually be a, a forested land. It's, um, a, a forest was a place where the, the, the owner of the land, either a lord of the manor or more than that, the aristocrat who owned the land, it, it, it was his forest to, 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 to use for his own uh, use and enjoyment, hunting, deer, with hawks and all sorts of things. In fact, it's, it was illegal for anybody to, to step foot in one. But yeah, this is the result of that, uh, that situation. And uh, I don't know what this brook's called, this little river, but it was a nice little spot. Right on top it is, that. It's called, the name of the painting is Curlew. Curlew, which is a, a bird, it's a wading bird actually. And uh, you do find them on top of the moor. If you hear one, you can hear it bubbling. Just sound like bubble, bubble. And um, a lot, really long beak, quite a big bird. Probably weighs about a kilogram. Yeah, um, a nice little time, that. I enjoyed that doing that. I think every artist needs motivation. Um, that can come in different forms, but from an artistic point of view, from an artist's point of view, the artist, first artist I really admire is John Constable. It was marvellous. And, and then, of course, Ted Turner, D.M.W. Turner, equally as inspiring, his early turners anyway, his later turners lose me a little bit, it's light, light and dark and all that bit there. But um, John Constable was ace. In fact, when Monet came over here into London during the Franco-German War is to escape it, he stayed in London and he saw Turner and he saw Constable. And he really, he, just, he denies them being inspired, but he, they were, he was inspired by them. And he painted London Bridge, London, the, the uh, Westminster uh, Houses of Parliament. Um, and there's no question about it, the turn in it, especially Turner, did influence him. Talking about um, Impressionist paintings, well, they're the they're, I think they're the finest paintings in the world. I like Sisley, I like Degas, Monet, not keen on Manet, but Monet. Um, my favourite of all is, is Paul Shazam. He was a fantastic painter. He, he, and the colour he used, he, he, he said he was the father of, when Picasso said he was the father of us all, and he was. I mean, you can see where the cubism came from, a Paul Shazam painting. But as far as pers me personally, I don't, I won't paint like Paul Shazam. I don't paint, I paint more like Monet or John Constable. I tried to, anyway. But um, yeah, it's basically, Constable and Turner 
influenced and created inadvertently Impressionism. And as a consequence of that, I appreciate how the other people were motivated by them and if they, they motivate me. So it's all, it's all a big sort of convenient way of, of um, appreciation, really. But I'm definitely am motivated by the Impressionists. I don't actually paint in the Impressionist style close to it, like it's like a figurative Impressionist. This painting is called Off Church Road, uh, Upper Mill. This is a more sort of rural, you know, without being on top of the moor or something. It's, it's quite a long, long road, Church Road. It runs from the centre of Upper Mill, right to the top, near the church, which is St. Chad's, St. Chad's Church, I to say that. And, uh, I was, walking, I was driving up there one day and I, I was just, this is a fence by the road. And um, I jumped out of my car and conveniently there were, this, uh, these beasts were in the field. The bovine beasts. And I, I took a couple of photographs and that's what resulted. And uh, I painted that in 2018. I think like most teenagers, I was interested in music. Uh, I didn't collect many records, but uh, the records I collected, I don't know if it's was pop records. I used to like jazz, yeah, Bruma Quartet, and things like that. And also, uh, I liked uh, folk blues, like Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee, Lanny Hopkins, that kind of stuff. And um, I remember going to my friend John Briley's house, uh, learned to play the harmonica, which I've, I've, I've mastered actually, I can still play it now. A bit of blues out, you know. In fact, that takes me to playing in a, a cool duo called Blue Folk with Richard Slack on the guitar and singing and me on the harmonica. We've got quite a few, uh, few gigs out of it actually. And then I to think, oh yeah, one of the major things, we're starting a folk club at Chatterton Hall, no, Ch Chatterton Arms, with my, my friend Rodney Ashworth, God bless his soul. I, I used to play and sing as like a resident. I played guitar then as well, as I wanted to. And I uh, played the old, you know, the sort of Bob Dylan type stuff and yeah, I used to play a lot of that. Uh, that's right, I wrote a few songs like we always used to do. And then uh, eventually, after a little while, I joined a folk group. We, we, call, we didn't call them bands then, we called them groups. A folk group called uh, the Hometowners. And they've only just stopped playing after all them years. And I, I played guitar and harmonica and did a bit of singing, but well, some guitar and harmonica. I play the old town, it's crazy. In fact, we were resident at, uh, at Chenet Downs for a while. But I played all over the place with the old town. And then <coughs> it got a bit committed, and I, did, I, I didn't really want to get famous or anything. I played in a, in a band, I wanted to stop. I started painting by then, and uh, it was getting in the way of painting a little bit, so I packed it up though. I can still play for myself, for my own amazement now. <laughs> uh, guitar anyway. Uh, not very well anymore, but arthritis. But yeah, um, really it's always been a, a big influence on me. Um, well-being, it's, it's good. I think we all feel better when we listen to a bit of music. This painting is 
of Dubcross off Wildland. It's in oil, it's on a stretcher. Uh, this signpost here, you know, it's got that red on it we're describing before. Put a bit of red on, on, a, on a, I mean it was there, but I've moved it forward a bit. It was more or less over the ridge of the hill. Uh, but if you put that, without that red on there, it looks nothing that page. Just don't look, take your finger off it, <laughs> it explodes into life. This wide lane goes down to the bottom and then it starts going on the flat a bit and then it comes up Wood Street. And right there is the square in Dove Cross, which is a... I think I've got to say that Cross is my favourite village. My mate Kevin lives about here. Kevin Haynes. By painting off him, you'll be doing very well. Um, here we've got <laughs> the usual Chew Valley. It, it can't escape from a, a photograph of... Sorry, a painting of the area. It's very dominant. You can see what time of year it is because this is a hawthorn. And hawthorns only come into leaf, in, um, come into flower rather, in May and June. So it's, it's that time of year. My favourite time of year, by the way. Not. Yeah, it was an enjoyable painting, and it's, yeah, it's, it's on my website. That was painted in 2020.